Next on News 8 at 11. Around the area right now, you can see that variation in temperature. Saying goodbye to our friend and colleague, Dr. Mel Goldstein, a look back on his life and career. When he came on with that smile, oh my God, <laughs> it was like seeing, seeing your friend. And the many lives he touched. Accumulating snow headed toward Connecticut. I'll have the latest on two separate snowstorms in our eight day forecast. Parking has become so unbearable here at the VA hospital that staff members say they have to go off campus just to find a parking spot. And the latest on the storm fraud scandal. At least two state employees are now out of a job. Live, this is News 8 at 11. Hi, everybody. Glad you're with us tonight. I'm Darren Kramer. And I'm Sonia Baghdadi. We lost a friend here at News 8 today after a long battle with multiple myeloma. Former News 8 meteorologist Dr. Mel Goldstein passed away this morning. His impact on the state was as big as his ever-present smile. Tonight, we take a look back on his life and on the lives he touched. Mel grew up in the quiet North Boston suburb of Swampscott, Massachusetts. His passion for weather started early. As a boy, he went through three hurricanes and other big storms, and they fascinated him. He got degrees from Penn State and NYU, and he found the love of his life. Everything with him is a new way. It's exciting. He's got imagination. I was so lucky to marry him. In the 70s, Professor Goldstein created the meteorology program at Westcon and built a state-of-the-art weather center. Then the broadcasting bug bit him. First it was radio in 1971. It was one station, then 20. Then came television, first an all-news cable station. Then in the 1980s, Mel Goldstein walked into the door here at WTNH and Connecticut fell in love with him. You can't have a conversation with somebody in the state of Connecticut and talking about weather without talking about Dr. Mel. For 25 years, he guided Connecticut through everything Mother Nature could throw at us. Floods, blizzards, hurricanes, and tornadoes. Mel's life changed forever with a diagnosis of multiple myeloma, a cancer of the plasma cells in his bone marrow. Doctors gave him 33 months to live. He fought and won for 16 years. Every day, you take one more step and you try as hard as you can to, 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 to learn and, and, to, and to grow and to not fear uh, life, but to thrive yeah, with life. And thrive he did, writing books, leading the weather department here at WTNH, and inspiring thousands of people around the country fighting cancer along with him. And though he is gone, Dr. Mel's legacy lives on, from a scholarship fund for meteorology students at Westcon to a research fund for multiple myeloma at Yale, and the thousands and thousands of lives he touched with his wisdom and his contagious smile. I tell you, there's nothing more satisfying than the feeling of helping other people. That means the world to me. And you start to get a small idea tonight of the number of lives Mel touched by all of the hundreds and thousands of well wishes coming in tonight on social media and our website and on other websites around the state of Canada. And it may have appeared to all of you at home that Mel loved doing his job, but he genuinely did. It was not a job to him, it was his life. It sure was. And a uh, big part of you coming in here, Steve. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, he actually was there for the interview about a year ago today. Without him, I, I wouldn't be here. I, it strikes me that, you know, he liked TV. TV, but I think more than anything else, he loved teaching. And I think yeah. television for him was just an extension of the classroom. You know it as a viewer at home uh, or if you're a student of his. I mean, he was just teaching on TV. It is very true. No, that's very true. He would often pose questions during his <laughs> forecast yeah. to try to quiz us on he the set. He quizzed us all the time. All the and time. over there, too, he would sit down and <laughs> teach us about the weather before we went on the air. I failed the quiz every morning. <laughs> You know, uh, he really did touch a lot of folks. News personalities, past and present also, tonight morning the passing of our friend Mel. News 8's Bob Wilson spoke with meteorologists at some other Connecticut news stations, as well as a former anchor here at News 8, and he's live in Hartford tonight with their reaction. Bob? As much as he put into his forecasts, he put even more into the community, into people. And it showed by the smile and the love that was shown throughout the community for him. Now, we did talk to some broadcasters across the dial here from all the stations, finding out how much he meant to them in their community. 
I look at Dr. Mel as a hero. I really do. He's a legend. He's a he's a he's an absolute pioneer in this market. No matter what kind of weather we were having, he was excited about it. The worse it got, the better he liked it. <laughs> it really is an inspiration and somebody to look up to. Meteorologists from Channel 3 to 30 to 61 all feel the loss. Even though he wasn't part of their news families, he was respected, even influential in some of their careers. Meteorologist Ryan Hammerhan met Dr. Mel when he was in the fourth grade. He couldn't have been any more happy to talk to me about weather and said, hey, why don't you and your mom come in this weekend and check out the studio and you can watch you know, us do the newscast. So I remember, you know, this was probably 20 years ago at least, going into New Haven and watching him put together the forecast. He was a role model, a teacher, and an inspiration for meteorologists all throughout New England and throughout the country. And I do remember when he was up in Massachusetts for some treatment for his illness, how courageous he was, probably the most courageous person I've ever met. And he was still so optimistic. He was taking experimental treatments, and he battled for a long time. Dr. Mel was diagnosed with cancer and fought and beat the odds. Former News 8 anchor Diane Smith watched him fight. He was given 33 months to live. When he hit the 34th month, he held a gigantic party at his house. He survived for years and every day coming to work, even with the intense pain. And I think now about all the times that he must have been in terrible pain and he would never let on. He wouldn't go home. He wouldn't give up. He just always plowed through. Whether he worked through the pain of cancer or a tornado that knocked out the power to the station, Dr. Mel loved to work. Mel had a flashlight and he was reading his forecast with a flashlight because Mel felt that people needed to know what was happening, needed to know if there was any danger, and there was no way that he was giving up because a tornado had struck. And the one thing that I can always remember was how much pain he was in and how he worked through it, sat there smiling, doing his work like nothing was wrong. I'm Bob Wilson, reporting live in Hartford, News 8. All right, Bob, and before coming to News 8, Dr. Mel had a long career as a professor at Western Connecticut State University. Mel founded the first university weather center in New England, which includes the state's only bachelor's degree program in meteorology. Westcon's president called Mel the school's, quote, godfather of weather science. He was a friendly voice on the radio and a friendly uh, personage on television. You know, all the, st all the young students in the state loved him because he was the one who told them they didn't have to go to school, you know, when there was a, st a snowstorm. Behind all that was a serious, very accomplished sci scientist. I mean, this was really based, you know, he never uh, really stepped away from his discipline. Dr. Mel's vision also included the creation of a severe weather index to predict the severity of storms, something students study to this day. And funeral arrangements have been made for Dr. Mel. Services will be held Friday morning at 1030 at the Robert E. Shore Funeral Home in New Haven. Interment will follow at the Temple Beth Tikva section of Beaverbrook Cemetery in Clinton. Now the family asks that any contributions be sent to Connecticut Hospice in Brantford. We have have also been getting in a bunch of pictures tonight through our reported feature that people have snapped with Dr. Mel through the years. Take a look. Here are a few. This one from Michelle Walski. She and her son met Dr. Mel at the Waterford Library back in 99 at one of Mel's book signings. That nine-year-old is now 21. This one's from Debbie and Shelton. That's her son Ryan back in 95. Dr. Mel speaking at a seminar there. That picture has hung on her wall ever since. Here's a shot of Mel celebrating his 65th birthday at New Haven's Light the Night celebration in the fall of 2010. This one came in tonight from Bill. If you want to share a memory about Dr. Mel, we have a special section set up on our website at WTNH.com. And coming up in just a couple of minutes, we'll hear from our viewers on the passing of Dr. Mel in a special Voice of the People segment. Store. Well, we've been getting a lot of calls into our Voice of the People hotline about the passing of Dr. Mel Goldstein. Here are some of your memories about Dr. Mel. Our family always loved watching him and uh, he was a wonderful weatherman, wonderful person, and um, our sympathy goes out to his family. He was a real hero to a lot of people. He's a nice, nice man, and when you listen to the weather from him, you, uh, you got a sense that he can get his hands around the whole issue and get, it, get you the weather. He was one person that you can never forget in your life. He was a caring, good man, and 
I know he's with the angels right now. You know, he, he made you look forward to the blizzard. I don't like big storms, but he, his smile, everything about him, I love. And I'm going to miss him. Mel brightened up the TV screen for many, many years, and he'll be sadly missed. God bless you, Mel.